Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Ducati Hyper Motard restoration. I am out riding the bike. She has passed her MOT. I've fixed all of the little niggles on this machine. It's been a bit of a bit of a mission actually going through and fixing all the niggles on this bike. But finally, I think I'm there. <laughs> I think I'm there. I've got to run it in. So the running has started. I've actually done um I think I've done 32 miles or so, so far running it in, but I've done about five cold starts in that in that 50 miles because it's been out, a problem, come back, MOT station, come back. So um, I'm going to just give you a little run through of everything that's happened to the Hyper, what I've done, but mainly what's it like to ride. I mean, I'm running it in, so I can't give it any beans, but I'll give you feedback of how it feels to actually ride. So uh, if you're interested in my Ducati Hyper Motard 1100S, I mean, look at it. Why wouldn't you be? You know what you got to do. Go have a cup of tea and chop the roll the intro. So uh, if you're not aware of this bike, this bike's been a bit of a labour of love really and there's I think a, a, a whole build series on this machine spread over a three or I think it's even a four year period, so four years since this machine has been on the road and uh, you know it's been a, a labour of love, there's been ups, there's been downs, there's been months and months passed with no activity whatsoever. I think it's been years past. I think it's been a year past more or less about any activity at all on this project. Some people thought this bike had gone and been sold many years ago, you know, but it did still exist. It's lived in boxes. I've moved house with this. What's basically happened here, the whole engine has been rebuilt. Um, got to say a massive thanks, thank you to Nelly at Desmo Works who did the engine rebuild for me. We've had all of the crank cases uh, seracoated, the covers seracoated, the barrels and heads all seracoated. So this has been a true nut and bolt restoration. There's not a bolt on this bike which hasn't been either replaced, cleaned or painted. You know, this is a complete restoration. And uh, as most of you will know who's, who's followed this project. So what's happened since you've last seen this? Well, I went out for to just to do some sort of niggle testing with it because the problem with doing a, a build like this is obviously it's got to be MOT'd you can't really ride it on the road until it's been MOT'd but until you've ridden it you don't really know if everything's working properly or if there's anything which is going to fail you know after you just sort of set off so you know I went out for a ride I'll, I'll, pop, I'll pop a I'll see, let's cut to my first ride on this machine Oh dear, seized up, <laughs> don't say that. Let's put it in gear and give it a little, little shove back and forth. Oh God. Hmm. Oh dear, this isn't what I wanted. Am I doing something silly? So neutral. My engine light's gone out. Hmm. Don't know what that was about. So I had the main issue was I had the uh, like the engine warning light coming on, and I didn't know what it was. I went home and I did some research. And if you hold the button forward as you start it on this bike, it will tell you an error code. And the error code was related to the starter relay. So I went in, looked at it, and it basically had dirty connections. So I've cleaned out the connections, and that's been fine. I've had no more engine management lights come on. I've also had to do a bit of work to the rear uh, master cylinder coming away. It's been a bit of a bit of a mission, these rear sets. These whole rear sets have probably taken me four or five hours just getting these rear sets set up properly and I'm not sure they're 100% right now because the gear change is very heavy on this bike but we'll talk about that when we're actually riding it but a new 
rear indicators look rhythm uh, small little indicators the exhaust I'm actually quite liking that exhaust now but the plan will probably be to go and see the guys up at Pro, Pro Race Exhaust and they're going to do me a double under seat exhaust setup you know a custom uh, custom under seat exhaust setup to finish it off other features on here you've got a full set of billet hell brake master cylinders clutch master cylinder hell v2 calipers hell lines hell rear caliper it's, it's no expense spared this machine because it's taken so long i just wanted to get this thing finished properly and uh you know it's amazing i mean i'm I will have to give some shouts out, shout out to people as part of this video. The people, who, my mate Adam, who's done all the powder coating on this. The wheels have been powder coated, but yeah, Adam at Hampshire Alloys. I'll put a couple. Of I'll put links in the description to the people who've helped me out with this and the experts who've who've seen me through this uh, this rebuild basically. But um, yeah, she is looking sweet. As you can see, I've got new sort of Ducati classic Ducati logos I may get this painted at some point but I'm quite liking it just in the matte the, the carbon I've got this is actually matte carbon here matte carbon around the filler and, and shiny carbon so I've got a mixture of a bit of matte carbon on the hand guards a slightly different carbon this is all sh so I've done a sort of a mixture of uh, carbon I quite like that different textures and stuff but uh, yeah finally finally after four years this bike is back on the road and what an absolute beauty she is let's fire up have i scratched my, my carbon cover already <laughs> but anyway let's jump on let's fire her up i do have to run it in as i said and i'm running hang on let's just fire it out listen to this Oof. I've also fitted the heel tech gear indicator. I've not set that up though, so that's not displaying the correct gears all the time. It is now that it knows I'm in first, but it's not um, it's not perfect. And I'm still sort of stopping every little while just to check things. I'm getting better, but I'm still not a hundred percent confident in this bike yet. You know, I mean, I've I've completely rebuilt this. And uh, I've had some little issues with the rear brake coming apart and just, just getting it right, but I've still not got 100% confidence. And I'm going to go down to uh, Hailing Island today to see my mum and dad, and I'm, I'm wishing I brought some tools with me, <laughs> just in case. Because like I say, I'm still not confident this bike isn't going to let me down, you know. I need to do a couple of hundred miles on it until I can get full confidence. But what is she like to ride? I hear you ask. Well, actually very nice. What I did do on this, I had the crank balanced. I think Andrews Engineering does a, a sort of special Ducati crank balance. And the first thing I noticed when I got on this was just how smooth it was. Obviously it's an 1100cc twin, but it's really smooth now. Really, really smooth. So that, that's really impressive and was really worthwhile having done. The other thing, it's a bit high at the rear. I've put a diff I wanted it, I wanted to jack it up at the rear so it looked a bit meaner, but it is quite a hot, it's a really tall bike. I'm six foot two, so it's not too much of a problem. But I am sort of being forced forward a little bit, so I may have to lower the rear a tiny little bit, but it's fine. It, it's it's okay for now. The front brakes are getting bedded in, and these hell calipers are really, really nice. Like I say, I've got the master cylinder, the calipers and the lines and uh, they've got a really nice feel to them but I've, and motor master discs as well but I'm, I'm still bedding those in and the rear's the same the rear's really nice when it when it when it stayed together and not falling apart on me but the biggest sort of uh niggle or thing i don't like it's the gear shift it's really heavy you've got to really pull the lever hard to change gear now I'm hoping that is because you know it's being run in and I've actually got some special running in oil in this as well like a, so it's not a particular grade it's a, it's a running in oil so I'm hoping because it's not the right grade the gear change may improve when I put the proper oil in there 
but I was really unsure what oil to do the running on. And I did a video, well, probably a couple of months ago now, my GX when I was running that bike in, and I'll link it at the top. But we saw in there, I spoke about, you know, what, what oil do the manufacturers put in their bikes to run them in these days? And uh, I really wasn't sure what to put in here, whether to put a, a mineral oil in, or whether to put just like a semi-synthetic in, you know, just standard grade. I wasn't sure what to do. So I contacted OP Oils, the oil man, he calls himself, at OP Oils, and said, look, I've got this bike. It's had these mods done to it. It's had, it's had supported heads. It's got balanced crank. Um, you know, it's going to be, uh, the engine's been rebuilt. It's going to be mapped. What would you recommend to run the bike in? What oil? And he said, I think it was a comma, a coma. I, I'll, I'll put it on the screen. But he recommended this special running in oil. Um, you know, it's like a, obviously it's, it's just a mineral oil, but because it's a running in oil, it's got all the cleaning additives and everything else in it as well. It wasn't even that expensive. I think it's about 30 quid for four litres. So I've bought, a, I've bought, I bought eight litres of that. And the reason I bought eight litres is I'm going to change the oil after a hundred miles. Again, when, when I spoke about running in in this other video a few people mentioned well i've heard it before as well like the first hundred miles is critical and if you change your you know but by that time you've got 100 miles on the bike there's actually quite a lot of material running around in the oil there are quite a lot of metal fragments and they recommend actually changing the oil after 100 miles and then putting some fresh stuff in so i'm going to do that i'm going to change the oil after 100 miles and actually what i'm going to do is Miller's, Miller's Oils offer a analysis on your oil so you send them a sample of your oil and they do an analysis on it and they tell you how many particles it's got on it you know what the condition of your engine is from that analysis so I'm gonna get that sent send the sample off to them after 100 miles and then when I change the oil again at 600 miles I bought another sample and I'm gonna send them another sample at 600 miles so we'll be able to see from their report the difference of what's in the oil after 100 miles of running and what's in the oil after 600 miles of running just to sort of see if that first 100 is the most critical see if there's a lot of debris in that first 100 miles compared to how much is in it after the further 600 miles so that's 40 quid they charge to do that analysis so i bought two of those and uh, i just just because i want to i'll be interested to see and also it gives you a bit of gives me a bit of peace of mind that the engine's running properly and it's not destroying itself because we've left a bit of grit in it when it's been blasted and that sort of stuff so a bit of peace of mind to get the oil checked and i think it's miller's i will uh, put a link on the screen below to, to the service they offer to get your oil analyzed and i think it's i think it was 40 quid for an analysis done on your oil so interesting i thought if nothing else well, do we need to pull over and just check things again <laughs> are we happy that everything's running fine <laughs> but it sounds i don't know if you're gonna hear it on the camera but it does sound absolutely awesome this thing it's got two great big k and n filters it's got a k and n induction kit on it i think it's uh i can't remember the mate now i bought it ages ago it's got a, cu a couple of great big dirty k and n filters with a with an induction kit and obviously the straight through termi exhaust and uh yeah it's just sounds mean mean as hell dry clutch as well open dry clutch i have also got uh a slipper clutch to go on it because I've noticed when you go down through the box it really you get so much engine braking and uh, I think a slipper clutch is going to be needed if you're going to really give this any stick you know but uh, yeah um, it's weird to ride it again I mean after being without a bike for four years I'd sort of forgotten that I'd even had it you know it's as much as I dare give it I've got a Michelin uh, Power GP2 up the front, but the rear still hasn't come in. So it's, it's been about a month, about six weeks. I've still got that temporary rear tire on this bike, and uh, it's it's not it's not very good. I can tell already. It's not a great tire. But thankfully, it was legal. It did get me through the MOT. But I can't chuck it around because I've got a very a very rubbish rear tire on. 
which is mismatching the front tyre. Alright, we're still we're still going. I don't see any any leaks or dribbles. This is the first I've ever been in one go. Come on, I, I, it's quite hot today and I hate leaving it sort of sat in traffic because of course it's it's air and oil cooled this, it's not water cooled. So it, it can I guess get quite hot if it's not got some decent airflow. So I'm very uh, I'm very aware of that. Especially when it's not got the right grade oil in, it's got a running in oil in. Because the idea of course is when it's running in is to actually produce some wear and bed in the the rings to the cylinders etc. Hello. Now we're gonna have to do some filtrage. Mirror in. Mirror in and filterage. Filterage engaged. Hanging on, it was probably a bad idea when the sun's out because it's, it's always busy. Stuck behind a bush. We're going around here. We're going this way. That sound absolutely awesome, <laughs> I have to say. Get me through this traffic, I want some airflow. But I mean look, we're on the hypermotard, I'm riding the hypermotard. A Mark IV Escort, you don't see many of those these days. Unbelievable isn't it that I'm actually out on this. Who would, who, who thought this would never get finished? You know, you won't be able to do it anymore. When I post a video or picture, people go, where's the hypermotard? I won't be able to do that anymore. It's done, this is it, finished. You can't nag me that I haven't finished my build series. It is done. But we will do a video of the mapping, as I said, when I go and see Chris. Chris is part of Luigi Moto, who are like a big Ducati specialist of this sort of era. So, uh, you know, they know these engines inside out. So Lu Lu Chris at Luigi Moto will do, do the mapping on his dyno. And that'll be a video, of course. So we'll make a video of that. And then uh, hopefully we can get the, the custom exhaust set up done as well. God, it's got a good amount of pull. It's going to be awesome. Once it's, once it's, I can't wait to give it a bit of welly. <laughs> It's going to be a, an absolute wheelie machine. I mean, this is a an 09 bike, so you know it has no electronics whatsoever, no ABS, no, not not even ABS, you know, nothing at all. Completely analog this bike. It's obviously fuel injected, but that's it. You know, cable cable uh, throttle, no ride by wire, no quick shifters, no blippers. I like it for that. But it does mean you have to be a little bit careful on it, I think. I think it's going to uh, lift the wheel rather easily. So I think it had, had 5,718 miles on when we first turned it on, when I first started it. 30, 40, 50, 60, we've done 40 miles. Just over 40 miles done on this engine now. And I think it's still in one piece. Unbelievable, it's still in one piece. I, I've still not got any confidence. I'm not, I'm not, it's, not, it's not having a go at Nelly and what he's done. I've got 100% confidence in what Nelly did, but it's just, uh, I'm just, I'm just a bit worried we had a bit of media left in the engine and it could be eating itself because we had some media in it from the blasting. And you know, it's just all sorts, there's so many variables, isn't there? Because it's been completely rebuilt from nut and bolt. But I think it's going to take a little while and uh, quite a few miles under my belt on this bike until I've got 100% confidence in it. You know, and I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to stop and pull up without looking over it to make sure there's no leaks or there's nothing falling off. You know, it's always going to be one of those bikes, I think. But I think this bike is definitely a keeper. Definitely a keeper. I've done too much to it to uh, contemplate getting rid of it. And I don't want to get rid of it. I think it's going to be awesome. I 
So there we go, I've seen my mother, the Ducati seems to have made it half the way of the trip anyway. <laughs> Let's go for to get home now. But there we go, yeah, the Hyper is back. She's back on the road, she's all legal. And I'll keep you posted on the oil. So once the uh, I change that oil, actually I'll, maybe I'll cut to the oil change now, or maybe we'll save that for next time. But I'll save that for the next video, but uh, I will be dropping the oil in 100 miles and getting it analysed and I'll, I'll let you know the results of that first uh, analysis and then I'll probably, you probably won't see this bike again actually until we do the mapping or the exhaust and I'll let you know the difference between the analysis of the second lot of oil which uh, goes in uh, after 600 miles once the running's complete. But well, there we go, thanks for watching as always. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.